Alright, what's up savages? So today I'm going to show you how to use the camera. This is for beginners. So, show you how to quickly use the camera here. Alright, so as you know you can change your view around the blender by holding down the middle mouse button. Orbiting, you can orbit around. If you hit zero on the number pad, boom, you see whatever the camera sees, which is this lighter area here. This darker area here that is outside of the frame, we don't see that, we just see this stuff in here. If I hit F12, it's going to render a picture of what the camera sees in there. Uh, right now, this view that I got right here, uh, it's, it's missing the rest of the uh, the model here. I can't see the floor, the rest of that wall. Um, I can see most of the store there. I've got a good scene of the store. So let's see what I got here. See, there it is. Let me zoom out. Everything else got uh, cut off right there. All right, so I want to get out of there. So I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button, just rotate my view, zoom out. I'm going to hold down shift and the middle mouse button to pan. Try to center this somewhat. There we go. Uh, let's say I want to get this view right here. I want to make that my camera view. But you don't need a little AC unit back there. I can't see it. Uh, let's see. So I can try to rotate it so I can see it. Or I can just move it over here so I can see it there in the final product. GX. Let's move it over here. RZ180 Enter. Does that look good? No, I'll leave it how it was. Cool. All right. So well, there we go. So now I'm going to hold down Control Alternate Zero. This will make whatever user view you're on, whatever view you're in, it's going to make that that new camera view. So it's going to shift the camera over, over here without me having to move it. Control, alternate, zero. Zero on the number pad. Cool. So this is the easiest way to move the camera. Um, you can move it around the other way, but by you just changing your view here, control, alternate, zero, zoom it out some more, you'll get a better result. But if you want to play around with it some more, you can select the camera itself. You can click on the frame here for the camera. Now it's selected. I know it's selected because it's glowing there. If uh, for some reason you have difficulty selecting that there, maybe there's a lot of stuff in the background, you can just select it here in the outliner. Click on your camera and it'll be selected. You'll know it's selected because it'll have the yellow glow there and the yellow glow there. All right, so you can just grab the camera, just like mesh, hit G for grab where you're in the camera view and you can move your camera around so you can see there. You right click to turn that off. You can also rotate it, R for rotate. So there we go. Uh, if you're thinking you can zoom in and out by scaling, that's not going to work. It's not going to work. Uh, when I do scale the camera, that's when I have a big scene like this. Or if I had more stuff in there and I had trouble finding the camera, I just scale it up. That way I can identify it easier later. Here for camera view. All right. Uh, and another thing you can do, you can access fly mode. To access fly mode, you're going to hit shift and Enya. So shift and Enya, this one right here. There's a name for this symbol as well. I forget what it's called. Uh, it's right here around the escape one and tab. So below the escape key, to the left of one and above tab. That one right there, shift and that one. Make sure you don't hit control and Enya because it's just going to hide that. Control and Enya hides that. So even I make that mistake sometimes. I hit con uh, control Enya instead of shift Enya. So shift Enya. There we go. Now I'm in fly mode. So you move my mouse kind of like in grab, but it's a little different. Uh, once you're in fly mode, you can use your your keyboard similar to an FPS shooter, a first person shooter. So W is going to be forward. S is going to be step back. It'll give you a steady hand right here. If you use a mouse, it's a little tricky to get steady, right? I can uh, slide left and right with A to the left and then D to the right. So just like those uh, shooter games. Go left click there. Let's say you want to use the rule of thirds. Go over here to camera view. And then open up viewport display right here. And then you're going to scroll down a little bit down here. Uh, composition guides. Click inside there. Scroll down. And if you click on center, you get this grid here so you know exactly where the center is at. Center diagonal. And you're going to get the X there. And the thirds. Here's my favorite one. The rule of thirds. So you can uh, line things up in a, in a third. Uh, the golden ratio here. There's a golden ratio. Maybe you like to use the, uh, the triangles. Golden triangle A. Well, then triangle B. Uh, you can actually overlap these, see? You can overlap them as well, all of these right here. But with all that information, might uh might not be so helpful. So maybe one at a time, however you want to use it. So if you're into photography, cinematography, this will come in handy there. Another way you can move the camera is, uh, check this out, hit 7 on the number pad for top view. I have the camera there selected. I can just hit G for grab here, position it somewhere else. Z for camera view. Now it's looking over there. Let me undo that. Control Z. Cool. 
Uh, if you want to manipulate it that way, I recommend doing this. Go up to your workspaces, click on animation. And this window right here on the left side, this is your uh, viewport window, just like this one, but it's in camera view. And then over here, just view, view, uh, viewport window. And then from here, you can play around with the camera. You can see the change that's taking effect over there. See? And if you want to get the render view, the rendered view, just click on the render bubble there. There. You can also hit the Z key and select that top option there. The RZ. You can see the changes taking place over there. Let's see RX. X again. There we go. I don't know why I'm making sound effects. <laughs> oh, layout. All right. Another thing you can do, I'm going to hit N for an answer on the keyboard. Uh, I'm going to go over here to view. So this is, this is the uh, sidebar menu, sidebar menu, and click on the view tab, lock camera to view. And now I can zoom in and out, see? I can change my view here. Whatever I'm changing is just uh, changing it here for the camera. Uh, this isn't bad. I personally don't like to use that one, but I do notice a lot of 3D artists do use that one. So just, just my preference, I don't use it, but I would not recommend against it. It's a, it's a very handy tool. I just, I myself personally, I don't like to use it because I'll forget to turn it off. That's why I don't like to use it. So when I'm not using it, I'll forget to turn it off. So I'm gonna turn that off there. And for Nancy, once it's off, then it'll stay there. There we go. Now, another thing I see often, students, um, they'll have a big giant scene. Uh, say for instance, here I have this other one back here. And they'll have a bunch of these, or they'll just have a big scene. There's a bunch of stuff in there. You can't really find it. You can't see that far back. So let me make a bunch of these here. Array, change this to 25. I'm going to put the camera over here now. Control, alternate zero. Cool. I can't see that far back, but there's actually a lot more back there, as you can see there. There's 25 of these uh, stores here, blend marks. Do for camera view, but I can't see that far. So that's, uh, that's clipping. That's called clipping. So select your camera, because right now I can't access the camera clipping settings. If I don't select the camera, select the camera here. All right, camera view, select the camera. And I'm going to click right here on camera data. And then I'm going to go over here, it says clip start and end. So that's how far I can see. I can, right now I can see 100 blended units into the back. I'm going to increase this number. See, now I can see more stuff. So this happens all the time. I can just type in a number there. Go from 100 to 1,000. There we go. So now I can see further back. So now my camera can see all the way back over there. Check out all the stores. Control turn to zero. See if there's any more in there. Oh, that's good. So you can just cho choose a ridiculous number. 50,000. 1, 2, 3. There we go. And then you don't got to worry about how far you can see. So that always helps. You can also use these to go left and right. Shift X and Shift Y. So Shift X and go left and right. And then Y is going to go up and down. There we go. Turn those to zero. And we go back to my other view that I had over here. So quick, the quickest, easiest way is just for you as a user, just try to make a view here. So hold on shift and the middle mouse button to pan. That's when you do this. That's the pan. And spin the wheel to zoom in or out. Control turn to zero. G for grab, pull it down a bit. And there we go. It looks good to me. Got a floor there and everything. All right, you can also right here type perspective. You can change it over to orthographic and that'll change the way you see it. Perspective is how we see in the real world or say for instance, if I was standing right here, this wall here um, will look taller than the wall in the back. So the stuff that's further away looks smaller. If I go to orthographic, it'll be similar to something you made in Illustrator where everything's the same height. All right, the tricky part is that um, if I try to go to fly mode in here, shift N A and W S, it's not gonna zoom in or out. I can do the pan, the slide left and right. So if you're using orthographic, I recommend going over here to animation. Even if you do the lock camera to view, it's gonna be different. See my camera change shapes there. A G for grab and it's gonna to have to freehand it here. So I'm trying to pull it back, but it's kind of going down. So I'm gonna hit shift uh, Z. That way um, it doesn't go along the Z axis, doesn't go up or down. It's still changing. Still not what I want. Let's see. G for grab. Man. So I guess I can try changing the um, orthographic scale here. There we go. G for gram. There we go. Layout. Cool. So 
there you go. So now I got this, uh, everything the same size. It might look kind of weird. It just depends on, on what you're looking for, what you're trying to produce, or what they're asking for. So it'll grow on you if it looks weird at first. There we go. So as long as I don't get that shadow there, I'm good. And then F12 would render. So I'm going to render over that one. And if you notice here, I got these weird looking shadows over here. Don't crash on me. The shadows over there in, uh, in Blender, they kind of had triangles there. See that right there they are. But once you render it, it'll uh, just smooth those out. Or try to. Well, it's better than, looks better than the other one. Well, cool. Well, there it is. This is my little blend mark. So I can upload this online. You go, hey, check out my blend mark. Even got the, that reflecting off the glass there. Let's say you want to change the resolution of your uh, final render of your image. So it's kind of like a widescreen view right here. Uh, to change the size here of this frame or the resolution, it's not going to be here in the camera settings. You're going to have to go over here to output. In the properties panel, click on the output icon. The one looks like it's uh, spitting out a, a printer, spitting out a paper. Uh, here it is, resolution. So if you want to use this for like Instagram, that's a one by one ratio. So you can change the ratio here. So it's a 1920. Let me just increase it at 1920 over here. And now I got a square. See, so that right there, that would work for Instagram. Key for grab, Z up, pull that up. That looks good there, but it's not exactly in the center. So um, instead, I'll just move the light. Let's see there. So I got the shadow down there. I also got to do a rotation here. R, X, X. See over camera view. So while you're in camera view, you can still manipulate your other objects. See? And uh, let me redo that move again. So I was select the, the light up here. R, X, and then X again. And it's rotated down. So I can get the shadow out of the frame there. Let me select my... Uh, a camera frame there, G for grab. I don't want to get the, that bottom part. All right, let me just make this one bigger here as well. As for scale, GZ, pull that up. Cool shadow, all over shadow do I want. And there we go, G for grab. And that's okay, I can, I can uh, settle for that, F12. And then see what we get here. Nice square image. If you're not sure what the uh, what the resolution is for whatever platform you want to uplo upload this to, you can always Google it. So you can do a search for like um, resolution for there's Instagram, YouTube, say so you go Snapchat. Snapchat, oops, my school Snapchat. But there's a resolution right there, 1080 by 1920. All right, so there's my square image there, and that one's good for uh, for the gram right there, fit nicely in there. So thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. You can help to, to support the channel by um, liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, hitting the no notification bell. Anything helps. Thank you, and have an awesome day.